blessed Christmas and a wonderful new year. Is it long these days? No. no? Mm. Very fast, huh? Yeah, yeah because so many stories, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the wife tells to the husband, Darling, you know that cake you asked me to bake for you? Well, <laughs> sorry, the dog ate it. <laughs> Convenient, huh? Husband say, That's okay, dear. Don't cry. I will buy you another dog. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Two husbands met each other, you know, in a bar, I guess, and talked bad about wife, gossip, no? <laughs> okay. My wife spent four hours in the beauty shop the other day. Boy, that's a long time. Why? So the other husband said, Yeah, and that was just for the estimate. <laughs> <laughs> How much it costs and all that. <laughs> the wife said, I dreamed you gave me $100 for summer clothes last night. You wouldn't spoil that dream, would you, my darling? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the husband said, Of course not. You may keep the hundred dollars in the dream. <laughs> the husband asked the wife, Where did you get that new hat? Oh, so the wife said, Don't worry, dear. It didn't cost a thing. Husband was very surprised. How? So the wife said, It was marked down from twenty dollars to ten dollars. So I bought it with the ten dollars that I saved. Oh. <laughs> the discount. <laughs> so it doesn't cost a thing. <laughs> How good, huh? One very hot day when guests were present for dinner, a mother asked her four year old son to say grace. The son protests, uh, you know, he said, Mother, I don't know what to say. So she told him, You just say what you have heard me say. Obediently, he bowed his head and said, Oh Lord, why did I invite those people here on a hot day like this? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he heard. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you better watch out. Your kids say anything, you know, <laughs> all the truth. <laughs> Remember the joke I told you a long time ago? The mother said to the kid that, I'm having guests today. Don't always come and tell me that you want to go poo and all that, okay? It's not very nice and not, not very pretty. So if you really want to go poo, you tell me that, must, uh, mother, I want to go to pluck flowers, yeah? Okay, so the kids say, okay. <laughs> and then uh, she forgot, no? She forgot, so <laughs> the kid come in and say, Mom, Mom! <laughs> she want to say something, and mother say, Not now, honey, I'm busy. Oh, you see, I'm having guests and having tea with guests. Can you tell me later? So later, uh, after a while, she... She saw the kid go in the corner and soak, you know, so she felt a little sorry. I said, okay, come and tell me what is it. 
Oh, it's too late, I already plucked flowers in my pan. <laughs> Yeah, I already wet my pen with the flowers. <laughs> the doctor said, Well, your leg is swollen, but I wouldn't worry about it. Okay? So the patient said, Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it either if it was your leg. <laughs> Easy to say, huh? <laughs> when it's not your problem. <laughs> Two women were talking. And one say that, my youngest uh, has trouble with uh, eczema and asthma. The other woman said, oh, that's nasty. That's pretty nasty. Yeah. How did he get them? <laughs> so the first woman said, he hasn't got them. He just can't spell them. <laughs> I also we have problem with <laughs> spelling this. There's some word you just can't spell. They don't uh, uh, read the way they spell. <laughs> you know, it's uh, very confusing sometimes. Okay. Uh, a doctor began his examination of an elderly man by asking him what brought him to the hospital. So the old man looked surprised and said, Why? It was an ambulance. <laughs> what brought him to us? <laughs> Couldn't you tell? <laughs> well, <laughs> who knows, maybe he got in by the <laughs> taxi, no? <laughs> what the doctor means, you know, right? Like, what, what's trouble with him, what's the matter with him, or what ails him? Okay, now, the first doctor asked the second one, Have you ever made a serious mistake in the diagnosis? of a patient? The second say, Yes, I once treated a patient for indigestion when he could have afforded an appendic tummy. <laughs> In the middle of the night, Karen awoke and screaming in pain. Quick, quick! She yelled at her husband, John, ring the doctor. I think it's my appendix. So John got on the blower. I mean the phone, right? <laughs> it's a blower. My God. Doctor, it's my wife. Uh, she's screaming in pain and thinks it's her appendix. So the doctor say, John, 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 calm down and go back to sleep. I took out your wife appendix four years ago and in my years as a doctor I have never heard of anyone having another one. <laughs> I think we had this before, no? Ah, fine, Johnny said, right, right. But have you ever heard of anyone having another wife? <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> of course, ne? You presume anything. <laughs> a man sought medical aid because he had popped eyes and a ringing in the ears. A doctor looked him over and suggested his tonsils should be removed. Yeah. So the operation resulted in no improvement, so the patient consulted another doctor who suggested that uh, his teeth should be removed. So the teeth were extracted, but still the man's eyes popped and the ringing in his ears continued. <laughs> A third doctor told him bluntly, You've got six months to leave. In that event, the doomed man decided that he had treated himself right while he could. So he bought a flashly car, a flashy, flashy car, hired chauffeur, uh, had the best tailor in town, made him 30 suits. <laughs> you know, he spent as much as he has while he's still alive. Then he decided that even his shirts would be made to order. So everything is first class, ne? Yeah. Probably he has money, that's why all the doctors <laughs> operate him so badly. <laughs> 
So, you know, if you have money, maybe you shouldn't tell your doctor. So he just treat you a common cold instead of <laughs> removing your appendix or something else. Okay, say the shirt maker. Let's get your measurement. Ah, 34 sleeve, 16 color. Color? Yeah. So the 15, the man said. 16 color. The shirt maker repeated, measuring again. So the man said, but I have always worn a 15, you know, 15, I think, inches or something. Yeah? Is that what I call it? 15 inches? Color. So the man said again, arguing, you know. So the shirt maker said, hey, listen, I'm warning you. If you keep on wearing a 15 color, your eyes will pop and you will have a ringing in your ears. <laughs> All this time, for to tell you. <sighs> you know what, guys? <laughs> I wore this just for sale, so now I'm going to change into something more comfortable. I come back in two minutes. <laughs> I thought I could bear it, but I don't want to. <laughs> because when. Huh? Yeah, this is the prettiest that you've had on all this time. Fine, it's but beautiful. I want to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I want to laugh. <laughs> I come back, okay, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you really yeah. like it, have a good time. Enough, yeah? Yeah. Philippines. Wow. Say, please wear them all so we can sell them. <laughs> All this stuff. I'm coming back in two minutes, I thought. <laughs> because, you know, it's pretty maybe, but it's not for laughing, you know, in my pocket. <laughs>
the parrot is sitting on the other end of the plank. <laughs> they just stare at each other and drift around. They drift for three days and still don't speak anything. <laughs> on the fourth day, the parrot looks over the magician and he couldn't bear it no more. So he said, Okay, I give up. Where did you hide the sheep? <laughs> I couldn't guess this time. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah. A man went to visit his friend and was amazed to find him playing chess with his dog. The man watched the game and uh, felt so astonished. Yeah. After a while, he said, I can hardly believe my eyes, he exclaimed. That's the smartest dog I've ever seen in my entire whole life. <laughs> so his friend shook his head and said, No, 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 he's not that bright. I beat him already three games in four. <laughs> three games in five, sorry. So the dog win only two times, poor dogs. <laughs> he's not really smart, is he? <laughs> Patient asked the doctor, What are your fees, doc? So the doctor said, I charge ten dollars for the first visit and five dollars for the second. So the patient said, Well, doc, it's nice to see you again as a second. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to cheat. <laughs> All right. What should I do? <laughs> So the doctor said, Okay, take the same medicine I gave you last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's smarter, huh? A man tried to sell his neighbor a new dog. So he said to neighbor, This is a talking dog, you know, and you can have him for only five dollars. Neighbor was surprised and said, Ah! Who do you think you're kidding with, this talking dog stuff? Said the neighbor, you know, there's no such thing as talking dog. Hmm. Suddenly the dog looked up with tears in his eyes. Please buy me, sir, <laughs> he pleaded. This man is cruel. He never buys me a meal. He never bathes me. He never wrecks me for a walk. I used to be the richest trick dog in Asia. I performed before kings. I was in the army, and I was decorated ten times. So the neighbor said, Hey, he can really talk. Why you sell him only for five dollars? The seller said, Because I'm getting tired of all his lies. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you don't capisce. <laughs> Don't care whether he talks or not. <laughs> what the stuff? What kind of people? Hmm. The patient called the doctor about two o'clock in the morning. Doctor, I can't sleep because I owe you so much money. You send me such a big bill. I can't pay it. It bothers me so much. I can't sleep. So the doctor said, Why did you have to tell me now? Now I can't sleep. <laughs> And the patient say, and I can now. <laughs> Another doctor say, ah, you are coughing better this morning. The patient say, why not? I've been practicing all night. <laughs> <laughs> this lion woke up one morning and felt very great. He felt so powerful uh, that he went out corner a small monkey and roar at him. Tell me, who's the mightiest of all the jungle animals? So the poor quacking little monkey monkey replied, You are, of course, of course you are. No one is mightier than you. So the little while later the lion confronted a deer and below out again. Who is the greatest and strongest of all the jungle animals? The deer was shaking so hard. He could barely speak, 
but managed to stammer, Oh, great, great li- lion, you, you are by far the mightiest animal of the jungle. <laughs> the lion on a roll then <laughs> swagger up to an elephant <laughs> that was quietly munching on some vegetable and roared at the top of his voice, Who oh, is the mightiest animal in the jungle? At this, the elephant grabbed the lion <laughs> with his trunk, picked him up, slammed him down, picked him up again, shook him until he was just a blur of orange and black. <laughs> God. <laughs> Normally people say black and blue, no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> a blur of orange and black. <laughs> and finally threw him, <laughs> you know, violently against a nearby tree. Oh, horrible. The lion staggered to his feet, looked up at the elephant and says, Hey, guy, there's no need to get so wound up just because you don't know the answer. (laughs) (laughs) Mrs. Uh, Smith was suddenly ill. in the night, and a new doctor was called to the house. After a look at her, the doctor stepped outside the sick room to ask her husband for a cock screw. Mm. Given <laughs> taking the tool, he disappeared, but several minutes later, he came back again, wanting a pair of pliers. Again, <laughs> he, <laughs> he came back after disappear for a few minutes uh, while the patient was uh, moaning with pain. And then he's, he, he wants something again. I need a mallet and a chisel. Oh, so, and the husband of the patient couldn't stand it no longer. What is the problem with my wife then, doctor? <laughs> so serious? So the doctor said, I don't know yet. I have to open my instrument back first. <laughs> <laughs> All the tools, I couldn't open it yet. <laughs> it's so funny, is it? You understood, right? Thank God. My English is not too bad. <laughs> You've been too busy, open the back. <laughs> Johnny was having trouble with a toothache, huh? So he visited the dentist. Uh... If you extract a tooth, how much do you charge? The dentist say, twenty dollars. What? Twenty dollars? Just for a tooth? It won't take you a couple of minutes, you know, John exclaimed. So the doc- the dentist say, well, if you wish, I can take it longer. <laughs> can take longer. <laughs> I will do it slowly. <laughs> there is a vampire bat, you know, the bat who takes blood, I guess, yeah. Came, you know, flapping from the night, and he's all covered in fresh blood, and he landed himself on the roof of the cave to get some sleep. And soon all the other bats smell the blood, and came and uh, hustling him about where he got it. He told them to buck off <laughs> and let him get some sleep, but they would not leave him alone. So finally, he gave in. He said, okay, follow me. And he was so tired, but he tried to drag his wings and his body to a spot about hun- with the hundreds of bats following behind him. Through the valley they went, across a river, into a forest full of trees. And finally, you know, the, the bat is uh, with the full of uh, fresh blood on his body, stop. And uh, all other bats excitedly, you know, surround him. And then the blood covered bat uh, use a wing to some. You see that big trees over there? Yeah, the big black trees, very tall, very big. You see them? So all the bats were excited. Say, yes, 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 we see them, we see them. So the, the, 
the guy, the blood cover, but say, good, good, because I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Good joke, huh? Good joke. Thank, thank you, whoever found it. <laughs> I did not see it. <laughs> they, want, they want to know where the blood comes from. <laughs> the doctor said to a patient, oh, Mr. Smith, I have some good news and some bad news for you. Give me the bad news first. Okay, the doctor said, okay. The leg that we amputated from you is a wrong one. <laughs> oh, the patient said, my God, <laughs> what can it be good news? <laughs> so the doctor said, your other leg won't need to be amputated. <laughs> After all, we found out that it's okay. <laughs> oh, my God, trust the doctor. Oh, my God, you wish he hadn't told you, huh? <laughs> it's bad enough that he cut it off and he even tell you the truth. <laughs> oh my God, such an honesty. Three friends die in a car crash. They all went to heaven, uh, you know, into a registration. So uh, the St. Peter asked them, when you are in your casket, friends and family are crying, you know, because of your departure. What would you like to hear them say about you? The first guy say, I would like to hear them say that I was a great doctor in my time and a great family man. The second guy say, I would like to hear that I was a wonderful husband and school teacher, which made a huge difference in our children of tomorrow. And the second guy, I lost it somewhere. <laughs> the third guy, I think, never mind, I think I know it. The third guy say, I would really like them to say that, look, he's moving. <laughs> <laughs> a guy had an operation and the doctor left a sponge inside him. Yeah. The friend asked him, Did you got any pain? The friend said, No, but boy, I always feel very thirsty. <laughs> Sponge. <laughs> Sucked up. <huh? laughs> the doctors always keep telling us that we have to go get a lot of fresh air. We must get a lot of fresh air, but they never told us where to get them, <laughs> where to find it. That means nowadays we don't see any more fresh air. Doctor, will I be able to read with these new glasses? Yes, of course. Patient, good, I never could read before. <laughs> Illiterate. <laughs> Friends, uh, talk to the other friend. I have been seeing spots in front of my eyes for a long time. The second friend asked, Have you seen a doctor? The first friend said, No, just spots. <laughs> <laughs> spots. <laughs> Must be a dumb blonde joke again. They must be talking about me all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> On the scientists, everybody got the right answer except Johnny. So the teacher asked her, asked him after returning the papers, Tell me, Johnny, how did you know that heat causes objects to expand and cold causes them to shrink? Johnny said, because I'm no dope, I'm no, no dumb, you know. <laughs> she said, in the summer, uh, Johnny said, in the summer when it's hot, the days are longer. Yeah. And in the winter, when it's cold, they are shorter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Now, everybody has the, the wrong answer except 
journey. Yeah, that's why the, the teacher asked him, why, how do you know that? How you don't know in summer, things ex- in the heat, the things expand. So he said, in summer, the days longer, winter, they short, shrink. <laughs> By the way, I just remember another joke. There's a, a new bride just uh, came to the fa- m- parents-in-law family. In Vietnam, you know, the bride go to live with the family-in-law, and with the husband's family. Not all the time, but uh, that was tradition. Now, I think no more. So when she first came, mother-in-law told her to, to boil some uh, spinach, you know, spinach, right? And it was a big, huge basket of spinach. And when, after she boiled it, it became only a, like a small bowl. Eh? So she was so afraid that the mother-in-law thinks she eats it. So she was crying, crying, and then the mother-in-law came and said, What's the matter? She said, I, didn't, I did not eat it. I don't know why it becomes so small like this, but I did not eat it. I did not eat it. The mother-in-law said, No, no, I know you didn't. And the spinach, they are like that. They, they shrink when you boil them, so don't worry. You know, they, they become less when you boil them. So uh, after a few days later, she gave uh, her some vegetarian ham to boil, né? three pieces of vegetarian ham. And then she was hungry, she ate one of them, and <laughs> only no, two left. Mother-in-law came, and how come I give you three pieces, how come only two left? She said, they shrink after boil. <laughs> <laughs> A woman went to the doctor, and then the doctor told her to take a hot bath before retiring. And she complained to her friends, that's not fair, it's ridiculous, because it will be years before I retired. (laughs) 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 Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, what is it? Tell me how you get it. Well, uh, Because I didn't. Years before she's old enough to retire, like 65 or something, she will mm-hmm. retire. She thinks that's when she has to take a bath. Hmm? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, she retire for the night. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But she took, yeah, she took it like, okay, she has to wait until years later on before retiring, okay. I got it. And there's another similar joke. It say like, my doctor told me to take a hot bath before I sleep. My God, I couldn't sleep the whole night. It take a long time. To, <laughs> 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 to finish the hot water. <laughs> a surgeon advised a musician who play violin that he would have to undergo an operation. The patient said, "But doc, I have concerts uh, booked already." If you operate, can I be assured that I will be able to play the violin in two weeks' time? The doctor say, no problem, no problem. The last patient on whom I performed this operation was playing a harp within 24 hours. No, I guess he just mean a real harp, but it 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 sound like he played it in heaven, <laughs> gone, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> that you all understood so quick. I'm amazed. It took me a while <laughs> when I read it. <laughs> it's called the lone mower. One summer, when the power mower was broken, so the wife kept hinting to the husband that he should uh, uh, fix it. Yeah, get it fixed. But uh, the message, you know, never received well by the other end. <laughs> like all the men, they don't listen. Uh, that's what they said. Okay. So finally, the wife thought of a very clever way to drive home the point. So when the husband arrived home that day, the wife was, uh, was sitting in the tall grass, uh, busy snipping away the grass with a tiny pair of sewing scissors, <laughs> just to, to hint that <laughs> the <laughs> power <laughs> mower <laughs> should be fixed. The husband watched quietly for a while and then went into the house. And then he came back out, 
he handed the toothbrush to the wife. He said, when you finish cutting the grass, you can sweep the sidewalk with it. <laughs> he never get it, did he? <laughs> Try not to understand, huh? A lady called her butler into her bedroom. You know butler, right? Rich people, they have butler, you know, like housekeeper. Okay. So uh, her butler is a man, huh? mostly a man. So she said to him, John! And John said, Yes, ma'am! John, take off my dress. Yes, ma'am! And removes the dress. John, take off my bra. <laughs> yes, ma'am! And he removes the bra. Now, John, take off my shoes and stockings. Yes, ma'am, he says, and remove her shoes and stockings. Now, the lady said, now, take off my panties. And I'm warning you for the last time, you are going to lose your job if I ever catch you wearing my clothes again. <laughs> Surprise, huh? Good one, huh? Good one. <laughs> you were thinking something else. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Mr. Melvin phoned the doctor for an appointment, and the uh, nurse said that uh, in two weeks' time he will have an appointment with the doctor. So Melvin said, In two weeks, I will be dead by then. So the nurse said, in that case, you can always cancel <laughs> the appointment. <laughs> no problem, right? After you die, you don't need it to just call in and say, I'm not coming. <laughs> the music teacher you know, took her class to uh, his first grand opera ever. Yeah. The lights uh, dimmed down and the conductor began waving his Baton, <laughs> wow, the soprano started to sing. After a long while, a student asked his teacher, Why is the conductor waving his stick at that woman? <laughs> oh, don't worry, he won't hit her, the teacher said to assure the student. Then why is she screaming so loud? <laughs> I thought I told you this joke. I mean, not you exactly, but to an audience, no? I did? Yeah. Where? In Florida. Florida. Yeah, I thought so. Sorry, you have to laugh a second hand again. <laughs> the wife asked the husband, Why do you go out on the balcony when I sing? I think you know this joke. Don't you like to hear me singing? The husband said, No, I want the neighbor to see that I'm outside, I'm not beating my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming out. A doctor phoned his plumber about 2 o'clock a.m. You know, after midnight because he has a problem with uh, leaking in his bathroom. Yeah? So the, the plumber oh, sh sh yells at for God's sake, Doc, this is some time to wake me up. So the doctor said, Oh, well, you have never hesitated to call me in the middle of the night with a medical problem. Now it just happens I've got a plumping emergency. So could you please come over? There was a moment's silence, and then the plumber spoke up. Right, you are, doctor. Okay, tell me what's wrong. The doctor explained about the leak in the bathroom. So the plumber offered, I tell you what to do. Take two aspirin every four hours and drop them down the pipe. <laughs> if the leak hasn't cleared up by the morning, phone me at the office. <laughs> it's emergency. <laughs> One day, the husband decided to wash his sweatshirt. After a few seconds, he stepped into the laundry room. <laughs> he 
yelled to me, What setting do I use on the washing machine? I never used it before, of course. So she said, It depends, the wife said. What does it say on your shirt? He yelled back at her, University of Oklahoma. <laughs> And these are the guys who always make fun of dumb blonde. <laughs> university even, that's his university shirt even. <laughs> what do you call an intelligent, good-looking and sensitive man? A rumor. <laughs> or maybe a science fiction. The doctor told me to take this medicine with a hot bath. I could hardly finish drinking the bath. <laughs> take with a hot bath. <laughs> Found that funny, huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. A man and his wife, uh, both in their 60s, were celebrating their 40th wedding, wedding anniversary. On their special day, a good fairy came to them and said that because they had been so good that each one of them could have one wish. So the wife wished for a trip around the world with her husband. And then, woof, immediately she had airline cruise tickets in her hands. Yeah. The man wished for a female companions thirty years younger. Woof, immediately. He turned ninety. <laughs> Good fairy, huh? Good fairy. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. That's what he advised you. Watch it, huh? <laughs> Good, nice fairy, huh? <laughs> yeah, lousy husband, no. She has only one wish. She couldn't wish herself to become young anymore, right? <laughs> A lawyer sent an overdue bill to a customer with a note saying, This bill is one year old. So return the the customer returned the with a mail to the lawyer and a note in the mail from the client saying, Happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> to the bill. Pretend not to understand. <laughs> Are you enjoying the bus ride? The bus driver asks. The male passenger says, Yes, yes. The bus driver asks again, Then why are you riding with your eyes shut? So the male passenger says, I'm okay. It's just that I hate to see women standing. <laughs> we saw it somewhere else already. Her mother asked the son, Did you take a bath today? Son said, Why? Is one missing? <laughs> <laughs> a woman went into a shop, a shoe shop, and said, I would like a pair of alligator shoes. So the male salesman said, Yes, ma'am. What size is your alligator? <laughs> you are so funny. I say it's okay, but I didn't think that funny. Are you laughing yourself silly? <laughs> I like that. Good audience, good audience. <laughs> uh, Sherlock Holmes and uh, Dr. Johnson w were camping together. You know Sherlock's home? It's a detective, yeah, okay. When they go to sleep, Sherlock says, Tell me what you can see when you are looking up. Dr. Johnson says, Thousand of stars. And uh, Sherlock asks again, And what is your conclusion from all this? Dr. Johnson starts to think. Hmm, if I consider it from astrological aspects, he said, I must assume 
that there are millions and millions of stars and galaxies in the universe. From psychological point of view, I conclude that we are so infinitely small in comparison with God's overall creation. And if meteor meteorology is concerned, I would say that we can expect fine weather tomorrow. What's your opinion? Sherlock Holmes said, you are an idiot. Our tent had been stolen. <laughs> oh my God. He's a detective, no? <laughs> My God. <laughs> yeah, when you're camping and you can see everything <laughs> like that, <laughs> then of course you have no tents anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tenant said to the landlord, I'm sorry, I can't pay the rent this month. So the landlord said, But you say the same last month. So the tenant said, I kept my word, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> Very consistent. And the journalist asked the editors, yeah, uh, Mr. Editor, do you think I should put more fire into my stories? So the editor said, no, no, just the opposite. <laughs> put his stories into the fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> He's writing garbage. That's why. <laughs> We have good interpretation. Pretty cool, pretty cool. <laughs> Who was laughing then? Huh? <laughs> Is that the choco? <laughs> <laughs> a man put a coin uh, into a vending machine and watched helplessly while the cup failed to appear. <laughs> Sometimes no cup, you know, a short of cup. <laughs> or the what? Or the coffee will run down into the drain. So one nozzle still send coffee running down the drain, while the other pour cream after it. <laughs> coffee and then cream. Yeah. So the man <laughs> shake his head and say, "My God, this is really real automation." He exclaimed, it even drinks it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee keeps sugar and gone. <laughs> when you have no cup, what else? It's funny, huh? It's really fun. <laughs> An American, a Scot, Scottish, yeah? and a Canadian were killed in a car accident. Sorry, sorry. They arrived at the Pearl Gate. St. Peter explained that there had been a mistake. Uh, Give me $500 each, he said, and I will return you to Earth as if the whole thing never happened. <laughs> Why 500 Probably for the paperwork, right? <laughs> office, <laughs> office expense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the American said, done, and instantly he found himself standing unhurt near the scene. And uh, the medic, yeah, paramedic, asked him, where are the others? So the American said, last I knew, the Scottish was haggling price, <laughs> and the Canadian was arguing that his government should pay. <laughs> That was good, huh? The Canadian know about it. <laughs> Two men uh, digging a, a ditch on a very hot day, and then the first one said to the second, Why are we down in this hole digging a ditch when our boss is standing up there in the shade of a tree? So the second guy said, I don't know. <laughs> I asked him. So he climbed out of the hole and went to his boss. 
Why are we digging in the hot sun and you are standing in the shade doing nothing? The boss say, it's intelligent. It's called intelligence. <laughs> so what do you mean intelligence? So the boss say, okay, I show you. I put my hand on this tree and I want you to hit it with your fist as hard as you can. <laughs> so the ditch digger took a mighty swing, you know, and tried to hit the boss hand. But the boss removed his hand <laughs> and he hit, the digger hit the tree. So the boss said, and ow, you know, and the boss said, ah, that's intelligence. <laughs> so the first the ditch digger went back to his hole. His friend asked, so what did he say? So the first guy said, he said, we are down here because of intelligence. <laughs> So the second guy asked, what is intelligence? <laughs> the ditch digger, the first one, put his hand on his face and said, take your shovel and hit my hand. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Uh, I can't believe that. <laughs> People, <laughs> such a joke. <laughs> I'm sure the beginning, in the original, they must have written like Iris or something like that, you know. <laughs> okay, never mind. A husband and wife and two of their children uh, went on a trip to Disney World in Florida. They were so amazed and enjoyed so much the wonders of this attraction. A sight. And after three exhausting days, they headed home. As they drove away, the son waved and said, Goodbye, Mickey. And the daughter waved and said, Goodbye, Minnie. The husband waved, <laughs> you know, <laughs> very sadly and said, Goodbye, money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what does he expect, huh? I go out with the kids, <laughs> just joking, huh? In a prison, uh, the inmates, their boy, you know, they have nothing to do, so they have a joke book that they all memorize, all the jokes inside. Uh, but the way they recite them and laugh together is by the number of the jokes, you know, like joke number one, joke number two. They don't tell the whole thing because they all know already <laughs> the content. So I just say number two, and everybody laugh, for example, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so any time they do that, you know, when they're bored, they just call out any number and everybody laugh because they all know what that means, yeah? Number two, what kind of joke, you know? Yeah. Okay. So there's a new inmate who came in afterward, and he studied in the book, and he also memorized it all, and he uh, said he wanted also to tell the joke, yeah. So they said, okay, you tell. And he said, number 21, but nobody laughed. <laughs> he said, why? It's funny. What's wrong? Why aren't you not, why aren't you laughing? A fellow inmate said, some can tell the joke, some can't. <laughs> <laughs> Just a number. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad, huh? You laugh, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> I thought it would it would be too boring or too complicated, but you you are smart. You are smart. It's good. So I, I, if I want to test your IQ, I just tell some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> a football coach walked into the locker room before a game, looked over to his uh, star player and said, "I'm not supposed to let you play since you failed math, but we need you in there." So. What I have to do is ask you a math question, and if you get it right, you can play. The player, okay. And the coach looked into his eyes intensively and asked, Okay, now concentrate hard and tell me the answer to this. What is two plus two? <laughs> the player thought for a moment and then he answered, Four. The coach exclaimed excitedly that he got it right. Did you say four? Wow. At that, all the other players on the team began screaming, Come on, coach, give him another chance. <laughs> oh, 
A guy said, I haven't slept for days. Second guy, how come? The first guy said, I only sleep at night. Ha <laughs> 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 ha In New York, on, on, in Vermont, on the way to a wedding, the wife and husband realized they had forgotten their camera. So they stopped at a general store and hoping to purchase a cheap, disposable model. Sally asked the owner, Do you have any of those throwaway cameras? And the owner said, Look, fella, I don't care what you do with it after you buy it. <laughs> it was the first day of school. As the principal made uh, his uh, uh, patrol, <laughs> He heard a terrible commotion coming from one of the classrooms. He rushed in and spotted one boy, uh, bigger and taller than all the others, who seemed to be making the most noise. He says the lad dragged him into the hall and told him to wait there until he was excused. Returning to the classroom, the principal restored order and lectured the class for half an hour about the importance of good behavior. And he said, Now! Are there any questions? One girl stood up shyly and said, Please, sir, may we have our teacher back? <laughs> <laughs> He's all new. The pet shop customers couldn't believe his good fortune. The parrot he had just bought could recite Shakespeare. Yeah. I imitate opera stars and intone Homer's epic poems in Greek. And he cost all his... Six hundred dollars. So once the man got the bird home, nevertheless, the bird never spoke anything at all. So after three weeks, you know, the frustrated and dis what disappointed customer returned to the shop and asked for his money back. So uh, the owner of the shop said, "When we had this bird, he could recite poetry and sing like an angel." Now you want me to take him back when he's no longer himself? Well, all right, out of the goodness of my heart, I will give you a hundred dollars back. So just <laughs> then the customer cannot do anything, so he took the money and got out of the shop. As soon as the door closed behind him, he heard the parrot saying, Don't forget half of the share. <laughs> My God, we thought cheating is only man's business. <laughs> Just a joke. A man was sitting in a bar with tears streaming down his face. Wow. A friend walked in and asked why he was so unhappy. The whipping one said, The doctor has just told me I will have to take these tablets for the rest of my life. The friend cheerfully point out that many people have to take tablets every day of their life. So the friend replied, Sure, sure, but he only gave me ten. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Normally they give you ten and you come back give another ten. You know? <laughs> Just fun. At the entrance to a big office, in London, there was a book which all employees has to sign when they arrive each morning. Yeah. So at nine o'clock, the manager's secretary, who lived in a small flat above the office, had to draw a red line under the last name in the book. And anyone who came after that had to explain why he was late. So whenever there was a thick fog in the city, the first person arrived late usually wrote delay by the fog. So under the red line in the book, you know, delay by the fog, because he's late, to explain why he's late, because of the fog. Then everybody else who came after that just put ditto underneath. <laughs> Same reason, yeah. But one foggy morning, the first man to arrive late wrote, my wife had a baby early this morning. <laughs> you know, so he didn't write delay by the fog as usual. He wrote because my wife had a baby early this morning under the red line, you know. And 20 or 30 people came after him, put ditto. 
as usual. <laughs> One day, the diver, you know, when uh, diving, the aquatic world, 20 feet, you know, are below sea level. He noticed a guy at the same depth he was, but he had no scuba gear or nothing on him, no oxygen mask, nothing. So the diver went down another 20 feet, but the guy joined him in a few minutes later. The diver went below 25 feet, and then the same guy joined him again. He confused. <laughs> so he took our waterproof chalk and ball set and wrote, How the hell are you able to stay under this deep without equipment? The guy took the ball and chalk, erased what the dr diver just written, and wrote, I'm drowning, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you guys still okay? Oh, we have just a couple of, yes. A new student at a university in Boston, unfamiliar, yes, so get lost, you know, and late. So one professor, however, was particularly intolerant of tardiness, so making, making it clear to everybody that no excuse would be accepted. So when a student stumbled into his class late one day, we expected the worst from the professor. Obviously, very upset, the professor demanded the reason for the student's uh, tardiness. Okay, so the student replied nervously, I was waiting online to buy your new textbook. Wow. So the, gazing now at the rest of the class, the professor asked, Well, then why weren't the rest of you late? <laughs> to buy his textbook, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Why were you not all late, <laughs> like waiting <laughs> by text textbooks? A home builder came home drunk and managed to park in the garage, but he injured himself. When he knocked some sample storm windows he had on a shelf, he got a few nicks on his face, so he rushed to the bathroom and did some first aid on himself. In the morning, going into the kitchen, his wife asked him, You came home drunk last night, didn't you? Heavens, no! He answered, I just injured myself on the job yesterday. So his wife said, Okay then, please explain the bandage all over the bathroom mirror. <laughs> Instead of lying to himself, he put it on the mirror. <laughs> My God, that was a surprise. Huh? <laughs> Miss, Mr. Smith had never been up in an airplane before, and he had read a lot about air accidents. So one day, when a friend wanted to take him for a ride in his own small plane, Mr. Smith was very worried about accepting it. But finally, however, uh, he, got, he got persuaded that it is very safe, and Mr. Smith boarded the plane with his friend. His friend started the engine and began to taxi onto the ru runway of the airport, and Mr. Smith had heard that the most dangerous part of the flight were the takeoff and the landing. So he was extremely frightened and closed his eyes. After a minute or two, he opened them again, looked out of the window of the plane, said to his friend, Look at those people down there. They look as small as ants, don't they? So his friend said, Those are ants. <laughs> we are still on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, when you look from the plane, people look like Aunt Julie, but this guy. <laughs> Good, huh? The doctor told, told Johnson to exercise and suggest he walked to work. That would be good for him. So Johnson said that was boring. Okay, the doctor said, okay, then do something while he walked. Row a hula hoop along, it will keep you busy. 
So the patient did as ordered. To avoid stares from a co-worker, he left the hula hoop in the employee parking lot instead of bringing it into the office. Nah? So one day the parking attendant told, uh, what's the name of the guy? Johnson. <laughs> that a car had damaged the hula hoop. <laughs> so he's, he added, you know, the car park attendant said, don't worry, we will have a new one for you tomorrow. Boss uh, Johnson said, Tomorrow? How am I supposed to get home tonight? <laughs> well, habit die hard, huh? A Sunday school teacher was telling her pupils the importance of making others happy. Yeah. Now, children, she said, has any one of you ever met someone else glad? You know, glad, happy, yes. Please, teacher, say a small boy, I have met someone glad yesterday. Well done. Who was that? My grandma. Good boy. Now tell us how you make your grandma glad. Teacher, I went to see her yesterday and stayed with her three hours. Then I said to her, Grandma, I'm going home. And she said, Well, I'm glad. <laughs> because I often have to catch a pre dawn bus to get to my job. It's written here to get to my jeep. <laughs> jeep. My job. I was concerned that I was always invisible to bus driver in the darkness. So I attached a reflector to lunchbox and put on a jogger's vest that was bright orange and had small flashing light. The first morning I wore my new gear. The bus zoomed past but then stopped. I ran to catch up with it and as I bought it, the driver asked, Oh, I asked the driver, didn't you see me? The driver said, I saw you, but I thought you were a road sign. <laughs> <laughs> in the dark, you know. A young man has, had been sitting in the drawing room a long time, and it was getting late. Suddenly, the door opened and her father entered. He coughed a little bit, cleared his throat, and then said, do you know what time is it? The young man arose hurriedly, stammered a few words, and in a moment or two was gone. Is your young friend an idiot or what? Asked the father of the girl, who stood looking into the mirror. Why? The daughter asked, a little irritated. The father said, well, I just asked him if he knew the time, because my watch has stopped and he simply left. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> he feel like he wanted to get rid of him or something. <laughs> a salesman said to a farmer, Why don't you buy a car? Uh, the farmer said, Well, I would rather buy a cow. So the salesman said, You look pretty silly riding around on a cow. <laughs> So the farmer say, not half as silly as I would look milking a car. <laughs> My God. Oh, very professional. Mother said to Johnny, I left two pieces of cake in the cupboard this morning, and now there's only one piece left. Can you explain? Johnny said, well, I suppose it was too dark, I didn't see the other one. <laughs> <laughs> the students in the composition class were assigned the task of writing an essay on the most beautiful thing I ever saw. The student, who of all the members of the class seemed the least sensitive to beauty, handed in his paper first with astonishing speed. 
it was short and to the point. He had written thus, The most beautiful thing I ever saw was too beautiful for words. <laughs> Cheating. <laughs> a father who has five children came home with a toy, summoned his children and asked which one of them should be given the present. Who is the most obedient, never talk back to mother, and does everything he or she is told? He inquired all the five children. So they were silent for a while, and then they all answered in one voice, You play with it, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one that fit the description. <laughs> a young waitress in a cafe in uh, John's building, waved hello to him every day. John was flattered, for she was at least 15 years younger than he is. So one day she waved and beckoned to talk John again. So John strolled over, she asked, Are you single? Why, yes, John said immediately. She said, So is my mom. Would you like to meet her? <laughs> <laughs> Dreaming about it, huh? <laughs> One day in a class, the teacher assigned his students to write a composition. If I am a manager, that's the title for it, all the students began to write except a boy. The teacher went to him and asked the reason why he's not writing. So the boy answered, I am waiting for my secretary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he's a manager, he has a secretary to type his things, no? That makes sense, huh? A husband and wife drove for a long time in silence after a terrible argument in which none of them would spoke. So the husband pointed to a mule, you know, a donkey in a pasture, and say, relative of yours? <laughs> so the wife said, yes, by marriage. <laughs> <laughs> the in-law <Yeah. laughs> The in-law side. <laughs> okay. The children were lined up in the cafeteria of a Catholic school for lunch. At the head of the table was a large pile of chocolate chip cookies. So a boy wrote a little note there, Take all you want. God is watching the apples over there, not here. <laughs> Probably they have a picture of God in the other corner where the apples are. <laughs> At the age of 16, Johnny decided to leave home and join a theater company. So his father was very uh, upset, appalled. A son of mine on the stage is a disgrace. What if the neighbors find out? So the <laughs> comic to be say, I will change my name. His father screamed, Change your name? What if you are a success? How will the neighbors know it's my son? <laughs> Whatever you do, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Kim, okay. we had all the best before, I guess, huh? So now it's difficult to squeeze a laugh out of you. Just laugh, man. It's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter is supposed to be good for you, even if you pretend. One way to, on the way to the... I think we had this read already. Oh, finish! Thank God! Oh, finish! Oh. Hora! Yeah! Okay. Thank you. Good audience. <laughs> oops! Oops, 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 oops! Whoever laughed the most, right hand? <laughs> now you are right hand. You can still make up for it. Ha 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 ha. You know what? This tastes very good. 
Please help each other, okay? This old woman is a little bit tired now. That's all your fault. You didn't laugh hard enough. Huh? Yeah, I know. It's my job, no? Standing up comedy, comedian. There you are. These are good stuff, you know? Very nutritious and not fattening at all. Yeah. You got it? You got it? No, you didn't? Well, lucky, you know, only not everybody get it, but some. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> the rest are yours anyway, okay? Enjoy. Uh, it's all right. Okay, yeah, I can do. Yeah, why not? Have fun. Thank you. If you go home, be happy, okay? Thank you. We have the best of everything, right? Yes. yes. Whatever happened, right? Yes. yes. We just have some chili film on uh, SMTV from Chile. Yeah. Uh, yesterday. Did you see it? Yeah. <laughs>